All right, so let's get into chapter three of experiencing uh, MIS. And we are going to be talking about business intelligence systems. So a business intelligence system is a system. We've been talking a lot about systems in this class. A system has some sort of input where it takes in things and it'll do th something to those things and then it delivers some kind of useful output. We talked about value chains. We talked about business processes. Those are all systems that have inputs and outputs. And in a similar way, business intelligence systems have inputs and outputs. We're here our input is multiple types of data. We have operational data, which is data within our organization. It might come from production of products or it might come from usage of processors or it, it might come from really anything inside of our business. We also have social data, so like stuff from social media. We can look at how our customers might be interacting with stuff on social media. We can also look at data that comes from customers actually using the product. I actually believe that does count as operational as well. Uh, but multiple types of data, lots and lots of different data that we think we might be able to learn something from. Our outputs are what is known as business intelligence. And business intelligence refers to patterns, relationships, trends, and predictions. This is all stuff that informs us about our customers, about our products, how well they're performing, all that kind of stuff, and things that we can try to use in order to generate more value. Whether we can try to predict behavior of potential customers in order to make them actual customers, look at trends to see if we can hop onto those. Maybe we can put, oh, this is going to be so dated, even by the time I'm recording this. We can put a little Among Us character on our product following the um, the very hyped Among Us trend of, you know, a long time ago, even as the recording of this video has been a, a while. Relationships. We can look at the relationships between, uh, say, different customers, and we, we can try to figure out things about our demographic, and if we can figure out information about our, our demographic, the patterns and relationships between them, and all that kind of stuff, we can try to more effectively market at them, more effectively make products for them, all that kind of stuff. So business intelligence, especially nowadays, business intelligence is the name of the game. Everyone is using it now. How are they using it? Well, they're trying to inform, decide, solve problems, and manage products. They're trying to figure out, you know, what's our next step? Uh, how are people using our product? How can we improve our products so that more people will buy it? How can we effectively market? That kind of stuff. Actually, that gets into uh, deciding as well. So information is actually, informing is actually getting the information. Deciding is, okay, well, based on that information, what are we going to do? Uh, we can solve problems. If we have a flaw in our product, we can try to use business intelligence to gather more information about what's not working or how we can do something better. And then project management, we can look within our own business and use business intelligence to try to streamline things, to improve the actual you know, design and production areas, let's say, all that kind of stuff. Business intelligence will give us a lot of really useful things that we can use to improve our company, improve our organization. Now there's some applications of business intelligence. Um, noticing changes in purchasing patterns can be really, really helpful because it's one thing to identify, hey, people really seem to be buying this kind of stuff. They really seem to be into this kind of thing. Uh, we're noticing this kind of trend, so we need to follow this trend. And that's really good in the short term, but th that's not going to be forever. People like to change. Culture likes to evolve. Uh, if you are on social media a lot, you can think of how fast memes evolve over time, especially now. Uh, memes seem to be evolving at a faster and faster and faster rate. If you're a company trying to take advantage of that kind of thing, it'll be really important to notice when purchasing patterns change. For example, you know, we had the big Pokemon craze in the 90s and 2000s and stuff. And Pokemon is still extremely popular, but 
it did die down for a while. Now, during the COVID pandemic, uh, there was a TCG card boom, a trading card game boom, and all of a sudden people were really getting back into Pokemon out of nostalgia, out of seeing people open up rare cards, all that kind of stuff. And that would have been a time to really hop onto the Pokemon bandwagon to try to license the Pokemon IP from Nintendo to try to put Pokemon, involve Pokemon in your products somehow. But then noticing the changes in those patterns when excitement for it started to cool a little bit again, um, when people got more, I don't know, more interested in stuff like Among Us or something like that, or they started shifting over to different trading card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, that kind of stuff, and Pokemon wasn't as big of a thing it it was i mean it's still big but not as big of a thing um noticing those changes and recognizing okay this change is coming or it's already starting to happen we need to start looking for the next one the next big thing so that we can integrate that into our product that is a huge application of business intelligence the entertainment industry benefits incredibly from business intelligence systems and i think the biggest player in this is disney recognizing how they can effectively optimize their movies in order to make a lot of money how much nostalgia they need to put in there how much uh like how many times do they need to like changes do they need to introduce in order to maybe update their nostalgia bait to a more modern audience uh specifically with marvel you know how many crossovers do we need per movie how many um references to other things so that people can point at the screen and say i get that how many of those do they need uh in the marvel movie all that stuff is heavily optimized through the use of things like business intelligence systems they can find say really popular emerging actors and suck them in to Marvel uh, so that people are, get really excited about this person who's playing a Marvel character. Uh, you know, this is September 2022, and I'm personally curious if Harry Styles is going to get sucked up into a Marvel movie at some point, given the start of his acting career. Um, modern entertainment, like modern big entertainment, is all about the use of business intelligence systems, for better or for worse. You see a lot of people following some of the Marvel patterns where they try to do crossover movies within certain IPs. Um, In video games, you see AAA uh, games with focuses on graphics and open world design and all that kind of stuff. A lot of games that functionally play out kind of the same, but through using business intelligence systems, Uh, are able to sort of optimize, you know, we're going to get a lot of money from this game because we used this pre-existing IP and we added, like, this tiny little thing that separates us from everyone else, and that should be enough to make everyone go crazy about it. So entertainment really benefits from these systems. And then there's medical reporting. Um, I I have to be honest that I I don't like this one, personally. Um, I'm a huge 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 believer in data privacy and this and honestly a lot of the other topics uh covered when it comes to data mining and data sets and stuff like that do go against that uh the example that this book gives is um how a company is able to essentially look at patient records and recommend treatments such as immunizations that have to be given at certain ages, you know, flu shots, tetanus shots, uh, HPV, meningitis, all that kind of stuff. They're able to do that automatically as the doctor is inputting their patient's information. They're able to send an alert to the doctor to be like, hey, this is something we recommend. And then the doctor is able to actually bring that up to the patient and potentially just get it done right then and there. Very convenient purpose and of course this information can be heavily misused that's when you got to be very very careful with uh, that's it you know it's an application now when it comes to data we actually have 
two forms of data. We have structured data, which is in the form of rows and columns. And that's actually uh, the type of data, data you'll be working with in Microsoft Excel. Uh, the rows are actual data points. Those are the entities that you'll be working with in say a spreadsheet or something like that. This, this doesn't, this isn't just limited to a spreadsheet structured data, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can work with structured data. Uh, one example is you'll actually be working with structured data in Microsoft Access uh, when that time comes around. But yeah, the rows are data points in the spreadsheet I was showing off. The rows are the actual students in the class. And the columns are attributes, which are some thing, piece of data that defines that data point. In my case, it was the um, whether or not they were present in class during that particular week or whether or not they posted in that help board during that particular week. So that's structured data. So here's an example of a, uh, another structured data set. And one thing I want to point out really quick is you'll notice some of these have missing pieces specifically in like contact and title and that kind of stuff. We'll talk a little bit about uh, data with missing, well, attributes, I guess. Um, but yeah, what we have is a customer and the different orders that they are making. So for example, uh, this customer, the attribute customer name, Gordo's Dirt Bikes, the attribute contact for this customer, uh, you have the attribute title as well, which is the title of their contact person. The, um, the bill year, the year in which they, that customer ordered, the number of orders and the units and so on and so forth. So each of these attributes, attributes describe things about this particular uh, customer's order. Now the other type of data is unstructured data. And this really is kind of everything else. You know, structured data is in the form of rows and columns. Unstructured data is stuff that may not really fit in rows and columns. Uh, you could have things like social media posts if you're trying to get information from your customer's Twitter account, or like Twitter posts or something like that. Photos and videos are um, also unstructured data. You can say, take in a video of something and use that as data or take in a photo of something, use that as data. Also heat maps are a really interesting one. Heat maps essentially talk about where customers are checking out on your website. It will keep track of their fingers or their mouse or something like that. And you can actually visualize it as a sort of heat map as if you're looking at your own website through a thermal camera or something like that where blue areas are less used and red areas are more used uh, so you can actually record where customers are looking on your website and these red areas are going to be the areas of most interest areas where customers are like really really interested and you can use that to possibly get information about say you know if, if they're looking at certain products and that's where a lot of customers are clicking on your heat map is going to show up bright red and you can say okay something about this is really attracting people's attention so that's data and that's all data you can try to convert into information now you can take unstructured data and reformat it or combine it into structured data um, for example with the heat maps you can parse that into say things that people have been clicking on and you put that in structured data, like as part of a customer profile or something like that. Um, if you have a lot of strings of pages that customers have gone to, you can actually uh, combine that into structure, structured data as well. Maybe you have information about every page on your website and you could say, take a particular person's browsing history, convert that into numbers for each of those pages. So then you can increase the number of hits that those pages have on your structured data, for example. So structured data and unstructured data aren't necessarily hard properties of data that will never be changed, but rather it's about like, um, are you able to convert this data into the row and column structure? 
Over the next few videos, we're going to look at the three primary activities of a business intelligence system. And those are going to be in these yellow boxes right here. A business intelligence system will acquire data, it will perform analysis, and it will publish the results. Acquiring data is actually getting data that you can use. So you have to get the data from somewhere that's going to be part of the business intelligence system. But then you also have to prepare that data. You have to clean it, you have to organize it, you have to tag it, catalog it, keep it somewhere so that you can access that data later. So you're making the data as useful as possible for the analysis step of it. In the analysis, you're going to actually be doing things like reporting. You're, you're going to get information from the data. You're going to do that through processes like data mining, big data, machine learning, all that kind of stuff, and reporting on your analysis. And then when you publish the results, or when your system publishes the results, that's going to be uh, making that available for the people who actually have to work with that knowledge. Knowledge workers being people who use the information in order to better the company. We'll talk about all of this in the next few videos, so you can look forward to that.